Welcome back. It's been a lot of fun this season bringing you the great moments from years gone by, but football memories don't come any more vivid than what happens on grand final day. So sit back and reminisce with us one last time in 2016, because like Robbie McGee sitting down the MCG turf with a can in one hand and a dart in the other after Richmond won the 1973 flag, so are the rounds of our lives. Okay, Fonny, so many great grand finals. We're going to zip through them. Good. Minimum of talk. You knew I was going to put an Essendon one in there, so let's get it out of the way early in the piece. There must be a St Kilda 66 in there. Uh, couldn't, couldn't find a so we've space got, for it. So you know we haven't had one St Kilda win for the entire <laughs> yeah, year. Yeah, I know, I know. Not one. Next year, next year. All right, let's start. It's 1984. Bombers haven't won a flag for 19 years. Hawks are the reigning premiers. It's a bit of a classic, this classic last quarter. Let's go straight to the action. In two minutes, Zins, right to the one. And there it is, a goal. Set about, five points the difference. Can the Bombers go on with it? Byrne tries to come out of the pack. It's Williams setting the Bombers back into attack. Up it goes there, Baker taps the ball on. Oh, beautiful play. Goes for a goal. And I think they've hit the front. Yes, they're in front, a point in front. That's four goals for Baker. Rain's starting to fall again here at the MCG. Curran shoots at goal, Hawthorne are back in front. And Watson, uh, Weston. Vanderhaar, yes, the mark. Vanderhaar. Kick is an awkward looking one. And Essendon lead by five points. Towards the wing position, Merritt. Got into the back of McCarthy, recovers well, goes for hand pass to the blonde headed of Harvey. A kick up there towards the full forward position. Vanderhaar knocked on. There's a Garnier for Weston. He's put it through for a goal. What a match winner this guy's been. It's set a half forward. This premiership is Sheedy's premiership with these tremendous moves he's made, Bob. 11 points the difference. And the Hawks come back. A bit of fumbling goes on as the ball is finally driven up towards their centre half forward line. Tapped on by Merritt. They're full of running. There's Weston again with a hand pass. Coming over to Watson. This could be another goal. It is. Oh, they're killing him. 92. Donnell knocks it onto Merritt or trying to find Merritt, but Watson's there instead. They're running right away. There's another one if he's accurate. I think he's dobbed it. It's Essendon's flag. No doubt about it. So that's beautifully delivered. Right down the throat of Merv Neagle. Lead in pursuit. Neagle gets his kick in long oh, and high to the this. goal square. And look at that. That really is the sealer if ever there needed to be one. Great play, Essendon. As the ball goes down there, but a mark for Danaher. Into this quarter by just on 35 minutes. There's the siren. Essendon winning their first flag since 1965. And the final scores, Essendon 14-21, 105 to 12-9, 81. It's just so emotional. It's 1984. I was 19. I want to go back. You've done a lot of acting on this show this year. <laughs> <laughs> 14 more scoring shots. I forgot that they actually, they really deserve to win that game. Oh, oh, okay, let's just move on. Otherwise, I'm going to chew up all the uh, the program time. Okay, number two. Now, fair argument uh, from, on, from a lot of people, this is the greatest grand final ever. Um, and they could be right. I just decided to put it uh, fourth on our list. Collingwood Carlton, the Pies have got it all over the Blues. They're 44 points up at half time. But what an incredible comeback from the Carlton Football Club. Let's go to the action. Let's go to the action. Building forward Lee Brown. Davis and Dempster. Davis! Well, this would be ironic. He's made a mark on the big stage. Is he just going to take this on his shoulders himself? Well, he's a man for a big occasion, we know that, but can he get the distance? He's pumped it hard, he's pumped it long, Stand. he's kicked the goal! Del Santo kicks inside the forward 50, and the mark is taken by Moore. By that, couldn't control it, rebound, out of the congestion, it runs on and on oh. and touched! <laughs> Maxwell tracking it back. Belting forward. Got up! Oh! Wow. Collingwood 
has never been behind in this grand final today. The Saints have never been in front until now. Man, McCaffer runs to the 50, sets it up, Shaw will fly from behind. Almost got hands to it, spills out the back. Clark, Clark has kicked the goal. Mark Pye is back in front. He's been terrific. Picks outside the defensive. Oh. What a mark. Revolt. That's one way of getting it out, Lee. Yep. Yep. O'Brien. Here we go, one Hayes. way. Hayes. Hayes belting the ball forward. Johnson quickly off the mark. Milner at best. Ball bouncing. Oh. Oh. Scores a level. Oh, oh, no. Oh, no. What are you doing next week? Goddard. The tap. Del Santo. It's going to be a draw. It's unbelievable. Oh. But it's happened. Oh. Okay, what did you notice there? It wasn't black and white. It was colour. It was Collingwood. There was no Carlton. I stuffed up. Read your notes, Connolly, you idiot. You need to see... You need to get... Like, see a psychologist or psychiatrist. You hate St Kilda so much that even when they're in... <laughs> yeah. the, even when they're in the years... Rounds of our lives, you don't even reference them. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'll reference them now. That is an epic, epic contest. The Saints, so close. The bounce of the ball for Stevie Milne. And uh, this will have to suffice. So apologies, Saints fans. But that, that was a classic game. Oh, so close. All right, speaking of classic games, let's go to our next one. A lot of people say this is the greatest grand final of all time. So chock full of incident. Uh, two great teams, the Hawks reigning premiers, Geelong, up and comers. It's 1989. It's the MCG. The stage is set for a grand final epic. And watch this on replay. You see Yates, there he is, number coming off the uh, wing there. He's hooking here. hand pass up the top, sends Pritchard away. Down towards full forward, Broughton, the test here. He's taken the mark. He forces off his back, back to the time. He kicked the ball long towards full forward. The marking contest, Hockey can't take it. Current, snapshot, hooks it across his body, another goal to Hawkins. Pritchard robbed of the ball, Hawkins away, gets the hand pass away quickly to Yates, who boots it down towards full forward. Brown was in best position. doing the ruck work against Deer. Applet over the top. Snapshot by Gary Applet. This is close. Oh, it's mercurial stuff. Okay, that's the direction the kick takes. Hawthorne player down off the ball. Missed down there in the pocket. Anderson scrambles towards goal. What a massive goal. Boss bumps it forward. Lidner, probably Geelong's best player. In traffic. Hand pass comes to Bewes. Bewes gets around Lidner. Unloads into the forward line yet again. Kennedy in front. Applet over the top. What a mark. Defense. Flanagan doing the ruck work. Deer. The ball comes down to Hamilton. Hamilton's left foot kick. It may even bounce through for a goal. It certainly is a goal. Right on the side. Spills come across to Lindner. Lindner breaks away from halfback. The second bounce carries into centre wing. Well shepherded. Goes long down towards the pocket. Atwood is there. Almost the one-hander. Finds it on the ground. From 25 metres out. He's kicked it. His eighth goal. The miracle worker is down there. Atwood carried under the ball, Hamilton behind, 40 metres out, open goal, it's home, another one. Brown smothered, kick off the ground by Dippy Domenico, the Hawks have the numbers on this member's wing, Bacchanara, over the top Anderson, into an open goal goes Anderson, and it's there, Hawthorne by 17 points, bounce favours Bruns, Bruns goes for goal, Brown was at the back, Ablett, he goes Ablett for goal number nine, and he's threaded it. This could be another Geelong goal. There'll be only one kick in it if Scott can get the ball. He gathers well and kicks it to Cameron, who's marked 40 metres from goal. Here. Taking too long. David Cameron has kicked one. David Cameron has kicked two. Oh, Scott Geelong must get it immediately. One down by Flanagan, taken by Buse, upended by Dippy and Domenico. They lock it up again. It looks like it's all over. The dream of back-to-back -back penance is all but there as far as the Hawks are concerned. There's the siren. Hawthorne have won it by six points. A hard stopper. Amazing stuff. Gary Ablett, nine goals. Hawthorne with a, a litany of injured players. Cats coming from seven goals down just before uh, that goal from Shane Hamilton just on three-quarter time. 
It was you know, you know what? I'll say this. I've often maintained that that game is a bit overrated because for the bulk of it, the Cats were six, well, seven the goals Cats down. Cats couldn't win that game. They really couldn't win the game until Cameron took the mark, and then he took 25 seconds to kick the goal. Yeah, but hang on. This is another misconception finding. When Shane Hamilton kicks that goal in the last quarter, they're only 11 points oh, yeah, down, I, yeah. and there was still, I think, about seven minutes. I was saying, that's when the game was alive, yeah, when Hamilton yeah. kicked that goal. And Dean Anderson kicked that one in yeah. response yeah. from a hack off the ground from Dipper. You know what I note? The, the, when the siren goes... It's not the same level of joy that we have now. You know, the players sort of threw their arms in the air. Yeah. Now it's as though the world is, you know... You've got the world to do the stacks saved. on the mill yeah. thing. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, no, it's interesting that. It was sort of more... I don't know, it seemed more real in a way, didn't it? And it was just relief for the Hawks by yeah. the finish of it. You realise if the graph keeps going for excitement, in 10 years, the, the winners will take their clothes off. <laughs> yeah, yeah. All right, uh, that's for you, Hawk fans and Cat fans. Great to watch your team in action. The, the start of a pretty good run of grand finals. OK, we're going to try this again. Number two on our list, finally. It's 1970. It's black and white. I'm pretty sure it's black and white footage. Carlton and Collingwood. Magpies have beaten the Blues three times during the season, including the second semi-final two weeks previously. They're on the way to doing it again. 44 points up at half-time. Is this going to be North Melbourne Hawthorne? It better not be, or I'm walking <laughs> off set. Let's go to the action. It's on its way, though. It's uh, right into the goal square. A magnificent kick. They fly. Big John is there. Oh, gets it around. Nichols, 12 yards out, directly in front. This is with him, right through the centre. They're taking their time with the ball, as you mentioned. There comes Jones now. It's a big kick, torpedo pump high. Walls is underneath. Nichols from behind. And Nichols is up to another one. Runs in. <coughs> See what he can do with it. He kicks, steers it right through the middle. There's no worries about that. Crossbow of Calvin. He takes his kick. Oh, it's a nice one, two up towards centre half four. The players set themselves. Terry Waters went up. But Eakins comes out with a kick. Jackson goes after it now. Look at this fellow go. Jackson a long hand pass to Hopkins. Hopkins steadies. Hopkins kicks. It's in. He's put it through. Holding the ball for four. Four in possession. 24 and a half. Oh, too high. Too high. Duke. On a slight angle. Brent Crosswell. It's on its way. It looks pretty good. Close of Collingwood steady him down. He's going for the lead from McKenna. McKenna goes up. He's playing it. Play on. Play on. Oh, play on. Play on is a call. Up towards centre half forward for Carlton now. Who comes Jessalenko? Jessalenko, a left footer. There's nobody there. Look at this. It's bounced through. There's the kick now, down to the half forward flank. A mark to Gallagher. There's a siren. Harvey. Harvey and Aquinas. And then the one with us is surrounded. Harvey and Aquinas. And our commiseration. Amazing. Just amazing. You know, finally, last week on SEM, we spoke to Barry Price, who played for Collingwood in that game. And he's still devastated by it. There's so many Collingwood people who really struggled emotionally to deal with that and still do all these years later. I didn't never realise how good a goal that was by Jezza. That was extraordinary. He was, he was miles out. And, of course, a bit of controversy. McKenna not being paid the mark beforehand. Well, uh, well I was going to say world record. Record crowd at the MCG, 121,000. That game had absolutely everything. If you haven't seen it, watch it in full. It is on YouTube. It's an absolute classic. All right, let's go to number one. Now, this may be a controversial call, Finey, but I reckon this game is a very strong contender for the greatest grand final of all time. No, we're not going back into the dim, distant past. We're only going back four years. It's 2012, it's Hawthorne, and it's Sydney. Let's see why this was such a great game. Trying to get the ball out. Malcheski, a left footer. Can he get the hook? It's pretty good. It's a chance. It's a goal. Grundy 
chance for Young. Goals open up. Decides to go to Bruce. Bruce needs to kick it now, and he does. Mitchell forward, and now Hawthorne with another big opportunity as Gunston rolls it home. What a finish to the opening turn. Hanabry gives the hand pass to O'Keefe. Brilliant by the Swans. Reed lines up a goal. It does not get better than that. Left foot. Good's in a good spot. And yes, he does. Oh, no, not paid. Maybe he didn't. Morton has to fish for it. Still fishing. No one's got him. And he's hooked a big one. Inside the 50 by Jack. Socket off the ground by Goods. He can kick a goal as man. Morton puts it through. It runs to midfield. Again, this is where their problems start to begin. Well, Franklin makes it easy. Takes the mark. Surrounded by Swans. Lines up. Hasn't got the carry. It's a goal. Yeah, and that's the man they need to move it quickly to. Franklin wheels around. Hasn't got the carry. I think so. It's right back in it. Yeah, that city end dominating Saul. Rioli starting to get busy. Mitchell, they'll be in front in a minute. Here's Smith on the burst. 50 metres out. Less than a minute. Back though. And then Shaw again tackled this time by Burgoyne. Hawthorne get it forward. Rioli brilliantly done. Weaving and weaving to Bruce. It'll sit. He'll kick a goal. And they're in front. Here they need a lucky bounce. Morton, can he take them all on? He'll need to. He did pretty well. He did very well. Jack running onto it with Young. This is big. Oh, oh. This is really big. It's a dead set, massive moment. And then off a step to fall forward. Big fly, Bird. Goods, could he roll it through? He can. Come off the moment. Come off the champion. A grand final from the top shelf. There's the bounce. Both Ruckman hanging on. Kennedy can't emerge with a football. Not forward by Savage. Hanabry to Malcheski. Is that the grand final? Sydney of Premiers. Get it. Buddy held up. Hanabry's been magnificent. Malcheski, two goals that he'll never forget. And they're home all right. They've done it. What a team. That culture of the bloods. That's what it's all about. I'll rest my case. Three comebacks in that game. Incredible individual highlights. In, amazing finish, game in doubt with 40 seconds left. What more can I ask? No, a magnificent game and played in the perfect conditions. Yep. Not bright, not windy. It was yep. a beautiful day for football. Yep. Those two goals by Malchewski, his leg kick, unbelievable. I, I'm with you. I think that's a great call. Thank you very much. You know, with all the programs I've had in place and the youth girls coming through, like I went and watched the youth girls carnival <clears throat> a couple of months ago and I was blown away. Like they were, you know, the skill level and <clears throat> the way they moved the ball was phenomenal. So it, the, the skill is definitely there.